Are there some open ear headphones that you're considering buying? Just the last few months have seen so many new ones released. We'll talk about the six best open ear style buds, each with their own pros and cons. At the end, we'll give you our picks. So listen up, open up your ears, and let's go. Goedendag, we're DHRME. Dating humid risottos makes endurance. At $199, the Shox Open Fit is not only the most expensive on this list, but also the newest. And we'd guess it's the most popular brand. Most people will be familiar with the bone conduction style models like the Open Run and the Open Run Pro. The Open Fit is air conduction like all the others on this list. And just like we've come to expect from Shox, the first thing you'll notice when wearing the Open Fit is the comfort. We just forget that they're there. Look, they were there all along. Maybe that's also got partly to do with the fact that they're the lightest buds on this list at only 8.3 grams a bud. The fit is great too and they don't fall out with exercise. Oh and speaking of exercise you get water and dust resistance IP54. The others on this list only have water resistance. So depending on your dust requirements you might need to stop the video right here. Oh you're still here. Well in that case you'll be happy to know that the open fit probably comes with the most portable case of the bunch. Why the air quotes? It's still a relatively large case compared to normal true wireless earbuds. But for such open ear hook style buds, this is great stuff. And being the lightest buds has its sacrifices. Specifically, battery life. Seven hours on the buds and 28 hours with the case. We tested those seven hours with our DHRME battery test and we got seven hours. Yeah, no weird marketing here, guys. And then there's the sound quality. The bass is present, but it's not as nice and rounded like the bassiest on this list, which we'll talk about later. The treble is on the sibilant side out of the box. You get five EQ presets as well as the ability to add a five band custom EQ. And the voice preset in the app works well for podcasts. And phone calls? Well, they do work well for phone calls. Here, experience it for yourself. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. We've got to say, in windy conditions, they did quite good. Usable for sure. Very hard gusts of wind would interfere with the voice clarity, but overall a good pair for the outdoors. In the noisy situation, they were also very good. You barely hear the background noise and the voice is clear and loud. But when Rowan speaks softly, the combination of the background noise and the wind did interfere with the clarity. Are you a fuckman? Well then you probably need a good set of controls on the buds directly instead of having to pull out your phone. Well, you can answer hang up as well as control the volume. Volume will only work if you set it up in the app. We'll talk about that in a bit. Then we get to the dark side of these bars. That app is basic. It gives you an EQ and the ability to customize controls. You can't do play, pause, track control, voice assistant, and volume control all at once. You have to make choices and eventually compromises. Only double tap and tap and hold gestures in both ears are available. Volume doesn't change until music is playing though. We've set the double tap to play pause and answer hang up and set the tap and hold for volume control. That's how we're able to adjust volume when we're on a call too. And that's when we realized that the touch sensor isn't always a hit. We've had our fair share of miss hits and that's usually expected with touch controls as opposed to buttons. There is a bit of lag between the tap and hold and the volume actually changing as well. Not sure why this is. And while these are okay for casual music and good for this form factor, we think the actual capabilities of the drivers are not the best on this list. And then there are three features you will not get on these buds. Number one, nowhere sensor. The open fit won't automatically pause your music if you take a bud out of your ear and resume when you put it back on. Number two, no wireless charging. You'll need to charge them up using the type C port. And number three, no multipoint. You can only connect the open fit to one device at a time. If you need to use it on another device, put them in the case and hold down on both buds to put them back into pairing mode. Okay, that's it. We're done shocking you. We hope it was clear. Clear, the audio company based in California, recently brought out the successor to the Clear Arc, the Clear Arc 2 Sport. It did address several shortcomings of the previous model and it continues to live up to its clear name. The biggest change has got to be the addition of multipoint support. Staying connected to two devices at the same time. The other major addition is Snapdragon sound. And you know what? We'll just come out and say it. 
These are the best sounding earbuds on this list, or should we say the clearest. I mean, not only on Snapdragon sound supported devices, but on most devices. Out of the box, these have not as much bass as the bassiest buds on this list, but it's also way more customizable than those buds. The Rock preset brings up the bass and brings it up to match the bassiest on the list. Also considering it's the loudest of the bunch, which is an important thing to think about when it comes to open earbuds, because your earbuds are competing with the rest of the world for your oral attention. Then that charging case. It's not the most compact, but the previous model had a USB-A cable hardwired into the case that you had to wrap up and zip up. Luckily, the Arc 2 comes with a good old female Type-C port. A couple of minor spec bumps are the battery life lasting an hour longer at eight hours on paper. In our DHRA Mi battery test, it came out to between eight and a half and nine hours. Nice. The case is now magnetic and does not rely on a zipper. The water resistance is now IPX5 and the volume gets 4 dB louder at 104 dB a max volume. That's the second loudest of all the buds on this list. And that is arguably more important in open ear products than in in-ear ones. Some of the good stuff from the previous arc has also stayed. The touch controls still include volume control, the app is still there with EQ and customization, and the arc 2 still does great in windy conditions when you're on a call. Here, have a listen to some mic samples. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Would you use them for phone calls? In the windy test, the R2 Sport took a serious beating with multiple gusts of wind, but the voice still remained fairly clear. It got suppressed, but you could follow everything that Rowan was saying. Very impressive. When it came to the buzz, let's just say it was mm, clear. The background noises like the engine noise and people talking were suppressed and Rowan's voice was audible. For the fuckman and amongst us, you'll be glad to know that you can answer hang up as well as control the volume straight from the buds. Now that we're clear of the good stuff, let's take the story arc towards the unfortunates. Clear for some reason spent valuable R&D money on features we feel are useless to most people instead of basics like quality control. We'll explain what we mean with quality control a little later on. You get features like the buds getting sterilized in the case using UV light, head motion to control audio and a step counter. We can't really verify the UV sterilization and this would anyway make more sense for in ear buds. But fine, what about the head motion control? Well, it can't be used for driving because every time you look over your shoulder to check your blind spot, you run the risk of either hanging up on your phone or changing track. And a step counter? Why? And what are they gonna do with that data? Earbuds are the last place anyone needs another step counter. I think our phones and smartwatches already do that with plenty of accuracy, health information, and the usual privacy concerns. Oh, and speaking of privacy, if you want to access the steps and challenge records in the app, you need to make an account login. But even that didn't work, it wouldn't accept a password even though it met the character requirements. I guess we're not missing much. Unfortunately, the Arc 2 Sport still only comes in two colors, black, or red. The red is uh, an acquired taste. There's still no wireless charging or a wear sensor to play and pause your music automatically. We've used them on Teams calls and what we've noticed is similar to how Shox designs their products. An annoying beep every 15 seconds if you're on mute. Maybe it's useful to some, but you get no option to turn this on or off in the app. Oh, and the Arc 2 was supposedly meant to be more comfortable due to a flexible, rubberized part of the ear hook. It's nice in theory, but in practice, after bending it, it just reverts back to its original shape. And in the end, it was less comfortable than the original arc. It would pinch the concha even more. Clear just needed to add a few millimeters of adjustment to give the arc a bit more room. And then we come to the quality control we alluded to before. Where do we start? Multipoint has been buggy with it not always connecting to a second device. The buds didn't always disconnect when we placed them back in the case. There were several times that after wearing the buds, it would connect to our phone, but only after playing audio, we sometimes notice it plays from the right bud only. A second after, the left bud would say power on and also connect and play. Weird. Do we recommend the Clear Arc 2 Sport? We'll give you our picks at the end. For now, let's go on to the Ola Dance. This is the newer version, the open wearable stereo 2. And boy, are we glad to see the industry taking multipoint more seriously. Just like Clear, Ola Dance has also included multipoint support on their Gen 2 product. An added bonus on the Ola Dance is that you get a device list in the app and you can toggle devices on and off from there. What else have they improved over Gen 1? Not an Ola lot. The bass is more capable and you get an 8-band EQ in the app instead of a 6-band one. And they do sound better than the Gen 1. 
On paper, the battery life improved by three hours, going from 16 to 19 hours. We ran them through our DHRME battery test and got 20 hours on the OLED Dance 2. That's a no lot of dancing. 16, 19, or 20 hours, they're all more than plenty in our books. And finally, OLED Dance has included some unique looking wingtips in case you had a loose grip behind your ears with the first generation. We didn't, so the addition of the wingtips wasn't required. Other than that, Ola Dance has kept what made the Ola Dance Gen 1 a great product. Nice design with multiple color options. They're so comfortable and lightweight that you just forget you're wearing them. They're IPX4 rated, the controls still work well and still include volume controls. And the way you put them into pairing mode is very easy. Just hold on both buds for two seconds and you're ready to pair a new device. But before we move on to what we don't like about the Ola Dance 2, listen to a few mic samples so that you know how they would sound on phone calls. Oh, 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 so. You can really notice the voice cutting out in windy conditions. You also hear the wind constantly. Not the best for phone calls in windy situations, so we wouldn't recommend them for that. In the noisy bus, the engine noise is suppressed, but the voice also sounds somewhat processed and cuts out at times. When Rowan stopped talking, the audio dropped entirely, so you can really notice the ambient noise suppression in action. They're okay for a quick call or in quiet conditions, but nothing more Fuckman-esque. But what is pretty Fuckman-esque is the fact you get volume controls on the buds apart from only answer hang up. Fortunately or unfortunately, most of the downsides of the Ola Dance 2 are the same as they were for Gen 1, except the peak volume, which was 5 dBA lower on the second gen than the first gen, which was kind of weird, making it one of the quietest on this list. Not by a lot, mind you, but still. Then looking at the downsides that remain from Gen 1, firstly, that charging case. It's big, long and a fingerprint oil magnet. This, mind you, only applies to the darker colored cases. On top of that, the case doesn't house any kind of battery, meaning that it's only used to charge your buds when you plug it in via Type-C charging. Ola Dance does sell a separate charging case accessory though. We're just perplexed at why they don't include this instead of a passive charging case. That included case also does not support wireless charging. The buds have no wear sensor, which means no smart pause. And something to keep in mind if you decide to leave the house without the case, then you can turn the buds off using the app, but you will need the case again to turn them back on. And finally, we're not too happy about the fact that the app requires you to log in with an account. Why OLEDance? Why? We know why. Everyone wants your data. That's why. Before we get to the base monsters, let's talk about this one. The Ola Dance Open Wearable Stereo Gen 1. It doesn't differ all too much from the newest model. The price difference is shockingly minimal too, at just about 20 bucks. For those extra 20 on the Gen 2, you're getting multi-point, improved battery life, wing tips in the box for better fit, slightly improved sound quality, and a hearing protection feature which will cap the max volume. Here's how the microphone sounds. In the windy situation, it was exactly like the Ola Dance 2. But in the bus, Rowan's voice was reasonably clear and oddly better than the Ola Dance 2. You hear the engine noise somewhat, but definitely not a bad option for a noisy situation. And if you're wondering about the Fuckman controls, then you can be happy. Answer hang up and volume controls on board. The downsides are unchanged compared to the latest model, apart from the lack of multi-point on this model. We already found the sound, fit and battery life to our liking, so the slight improvements there are only important if you need them. But for the extra features and improvements, we'd easily recommend the newer version of the Ola Dance because the difference in price is like minimal. The One Audio Open Rock Pro at first glance seems like it wouldn't compete with the other buds on this list, being a first generation product. But nothing could be further from the truth. The comfort is on point and very much in line with the Ola Dance. In addition, they even have adjustable hooks that actually work unlike the clear. The rubberized part bends and stays in place, so once you find your fit, it can remain that way. You get good old reliable buttons on both buds. A single press will play pause your music or answer hang up your calls. Double press is for volume, which is always a desired feature for us. Oh, and those volume controls also work when you're on a call. Triple tap brings up your voice assistant and a long press gives you track control. If you long press long enough, you can turn off and on the buds without the case. Handy if you're out for a run and don't feel like taking the case with you. And you can do that with these guys. Not just because it's IPX5 rated, but because the battery life is amazing. Okay, One Audio are a bit overconfident in their numbers, claiming 19 hours on a single charge. In our testing, we got around 15 hours, which is still freaking amazing. 
With the charging case, you'll get up to 46 hours of charge. One thing we like about the Open Rock is the audio. Overall, the Open Rock Pro has a warmish sound with more emphasis on the bass. You can even kind of hear the sub bass, or is that my brain recreating it? Whichever way you slice it, the sound signature works fantastic for rock. Guess that's why they're called the Open Rock. A track like Rage Against the Machine's Killing in the Name Of has its guitar distortion and drums standing out in full glory. Now you might say, you might say in a quiet environment that this has too much bass and we'd kind of agree, but that's only if you're sitting down in a quiet room. But here's the thing, for open ear buds, if you go outside or even turn on the fan, you're gonna need that extra bass because of the open nature of your ear holes. So actually, no, this does not have too much bass when you use it in normal environments. And out of the box, these buds sound quite good, obviating the need for EQ. If you end up taking phone calls on these, then this is how they sound. Pop, 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 ice, 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 test, test, testing, one, two, three. In the wind, they're pretty decent and in our opinion, usable. Yes, when the wind was blowing very hard, it was a bit hard to understand Rowan's voice, but overall, it did very well. In the noisy bus, it wasn't as good. Although most of the background noise is suppressed, the voice is a bit muffled and lower in volume. If you pay attention, you can hold a conversation, but not something the other person on the phone will enjoy doing for a long time. But if in that short time you need your Fuckman controls, then fret not, you get answer hang up and volume controls. Okay, what we're not fans of is the design. They are very much open rocking that 90s Wall Street banker look especially the black and gray one we have. The gray and silver is a bit too flashy and plasticky for our taste. Unfortunately, those are the only two color options you get. Also, the slightly chunky design can work against it if you wear slightly chunky glasses. Remember we said you can leave the charging case and take the buds with you because you can still turn the buds on and off without it? Well, another reason that puts us off the case is just how bulky it is. Definitely in the odd bulge in your pocket category and would even go far enough to say that these are straight up unpocketable for many of us. The way you take the buds out or return them to the case takes some finger gymnastics, but you do get used to it. And if you decide to ditch the case, you can use a silicone case like this one to protect the buds. Not sure why One Audio doesn't throw it in for free, but charge an extra $5 for it. And there are a few extra gestures which you do not get with the Open Rock Pro. There's no app, so you get what you get. Whether it's the sound which you cannot customize or what you can click in terms of controls. Unless, of course, you start using third-party apps for EQing and deal with all the risks that come with that. There is no case, no wear sensor for smart pause, and no multi-point support. And while these sound good, these are one of the quietest out of the buds on this list in terms of peak volume because we're talking just a couple of dBA here. Then the cheapest on this list, guys, the first generation of the Clear Arc. We've had this product on the channel before, so if you want more in-depth information, you can check those other videos out. It doesn't have anything extra compared to the Arc 2, and something we liked about the Arc 1 was the fact that the touch controls included volume. It does take some getting used to since it's a single tap followed by a tap and hold. Not our favorite way of controlling volume, but it's great that you get it. You also get a charging case that can also charge the buds, unlike the Ola dances. There is something about that charging case that we don't like though, but we'll get to that later. The battery life is advertised to be seven hours on a single charge. In our DHRME battery test, we got just under 10 hours of battery life. The companion app includes an EQ, which is always a plus in our books. And that goes for the IPX4 rating. Really the minimum water resistance for open ear style buds like this that many will use for workouts. And working out with this is fine. They stay in place and don't feel like they'll fall off easily. And finally, like we said about the Arc 2 Sport, these are great at handling windy situations on phone calls. Speaking of... In the windy situation, we got what we expected. An impressive performance just like the Arc 2 Sport. You hear a bit of the wind, but my voice is generally undeterred and maintains clarity. The only gripe would be the voice sounding a bit processed, depending on the angle of the wind hitting the buds and the lower volume too. In the bus, you still hear the background noise quite a bit, doable for a phone call in a pinch, but definitely not for longer conversations. Oh, and answer hang up and volume controls? Yes, dear fuck mana, you got him. The color options on the clear arc aren't something to write home about. Just blue and what we have here, gray. Although the fit is good, the clamp on your ear is a little bit on the tight side. So compared to the other buds on this list, like the Ola Dances and Open Rock, you might notice this more. But we've got to say that it's way more comfortable than the Arc 2 Sport. Removing the buds from your ears will not pause your music automatically since there's no wear sensor. 
you also get no wireless charging. And speaking of charging, like we briefly mentioned before, we don't like to weigh the charging case as a built-in USB type A cable. There's no USB-C port, so you're stuck using the built-in cable. And just like the older generation of the OLEDANS, this older ARC has no multi-point support. So you're living one device at a time. But Rowan, which one would you choose? Well, Kevin, we've got a wide range of prices to choose from here. Now, had the Clear Arc 2 been super comfortable and super reliable, we could still have made a case for it. The sound, calling, battery life and design are on point for me, but I really don't need that much stress in my life. To be honest, in my middle class mind, money is still an issue, so I choose the One Audio Open Rock Pro. At the second lowest price on this list, it gives me everything I need, a comfortable design, solid sound, good battery life, and physical buttons. Plus, I actually see the lack of an app as a positive. That second case situation isn't ideal, but it's pocketable if it needs to be. In second place would be the Ola Dance Gen 1 because it does the basics well and is a bit more portable than the One Audio. What about you, Kevin? I think it goes without saying that these sorts of buds are awesome for workouts because of how aware you are of your surroundings. But I am also a desk worker with more devices than I'd like in my life, which means I strongly, strongly value multi-point support. The comfort and long battery life these buds provide mean I can hook these onto my ears in the morning and leave them on for the whole work day. I can take calls on my laptop and listen to music on my phone. That's a long story to tell you that I would pick the Ola Dance Open Wearable Stereo 2. It's definitely on the higher end price wise, but if they're being used for workouts and work days, then I'm getting two use cases in one. Totally worth it for me. Guys, all products you saw in this video were sent out by the respective companies for review. No one got special treatment and we call it like we see it. Also, we never accept money from companies whose products we review. So you guys are the real sponsors of DHRME, especially you lovely patrons and YouTube members. This video took about 50 to 60 hours to test, script, shoot and edit. And you get the content for free. You can help support more of this by becoming a patron or YouTube member for the price of a coffee or chai. And tester tier members, you automatically qualify for giveaways. So get in on that action by becoming a tester tier patron or YouTube member. You've been opening your hearts, your mind and your ears. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste. I can take calls on my...